One of the questions I get asked quite a lot is, should I be using a rangefinder and how much should I be spending on it? In today's video, we're gonna take a look at a premium rangefinder and an X9 slope from Precision Pro. And we're gonna take a look at a budget rangefinder from Go, 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 Go Sports and see what the differences are between these two products. Should you be going for a premium one or should we go for a budget and what really is that difference? Let's take a look right now. So two range finders, we've got a premium and we've got a budget, but why is there a difference? Well, firstly, there's a price difference. Everyone's got obviously a price bracket that they're gonna see themselves in. And what I've done here when I was sent these two range finders, they've actually fallen perfectly in line for what I wanna do. We've got a budget one at $92. We've got a premium one at $269. So $170 in between there, but, when we see both of them, when we get them performing out on the golf course, when we unbox them, is there a massive difference? Would it warrant paying that extra $170 for the premium one or should we just go for the budget one? So let's take a look at them and find out. First things first, when you get them both in hand just um, with both boxes, what I would say is this has got mountains all over it and it says it's for on the box here, hunting, archery, golf and adventure as where looking at this one, I know it's a golf range finder. It's got lots of pictures of greens, flags, etc. So straight away, you know, from detail wise, they put a little bit more thought into the detail and it's giving me an actual show and um, tell of what the range finder looks like on the premium one gives me you know a little bit of a review from a customer tells what it's offering as where this one just tells us a few yardages and what sports you can do with it so straight away you know detail there wise boxing as well feels a lot more substantial this boxing more um you know, rugged, not rugged, um, refined cardboard, feels strong, feels sturdy, feels a little bit flimsy here in this one. So we'll open this one out firstly, when we get that out. So we've got, oh, we've got all the little manuals there with it to tell us how to operate the slope, how the range finder works, how it all goes through there. Little, um, eye cloth for cleaning the actual range finder and your satisfaction is guaranteed that's good and um, both these range finders as well have got flag locking vibration on them so when it hits the pin it vibrates and they've both got slope on them as well um first look it seems that whenever you get a range finder you have to have a gray case i've yet to come across one except for bushnells back in the day that have um, black cases but they're now even gray um i, I stray We've got a little little um, rubber embossed badge on here saying laser range finder. So that's good, we know what it is. It's not got a little clip here. It's got like a belt strap. I could get that if I'm going hunting, archery and adventure. I'd maybe want it on my belt, but on golf, I'm not gonna be wearing this around my belt as I go through. I'd want a clip that I can clip it onto my bag because I don't wanna be fishing in and out of a bag every time. Um, but, you know, overall feels a pretty substantial case. When we get the actual range finder out, not bad, not bad on first, um, first look. It feels very light though. Feels, I wouldn't say brittle, but it doesn't feel very substantial for how big that is. And, you know, it's got batteries in there. It almost doesn't feel like there's much to it, which, should really be a positive when you're carrying this thing around the golf course, but it just feels like I say, I don't want to use the word brittle too too much, but it doesn't feel substantial is what I would think, you know, a little bit more would suit it better. But, you know, feels wise, it's got that sort of rubbery feel to it. So it feels good in the hand. We've got a little nodule here for it to sit into the thumb quite nicely. Place it up to your eye, feels good. In terms of ease of use, we've got the power button to turn it on and get your yardages. We've got the mode button for turning um, from yards to meters. And then we've also got a little button here that you can flick on and off for your slope. So, you know, first, first thoughts is that, yeah, feels good, looks good generally, but just that weight's just a little bit concerning to me. Um, when we go over to the premium one, like I say, straight away, a lot more info already on the box, tournament legal, 
how it actually works, a review, what to do with it, you know, the features and benefits down the side of the box already, and more drawn into this product. Um, oh, oh, that looks like, a, like an apple when you get your instructions with an apple. Little envelope, that's quite handy. And then even the box inside, if we can see that, it's got little greens on there. Looks like a little bit of an architect's map with a nice little quote. You don't make birdies, you set yourself up for them. True story. Um, again, standard grey dinghy. The clip that I was talking about there, I definitely want one of those so you can just whack it onto your bag. Nice Precision Pro logo on there instead of just laser rangefinder. Again, just seems attention to detail a little bit more. Seems to be the big wavering distance so far here. Just opening them with the premium one. That weight test, I'd be interested to know the actual weight of both of those because that feels super light as well. That actually just feels a little bit more robust as I get it in my hand and feels, you know, more sturdy. Um, again, power button as we get in there, mode button, nice and nice and um, flush to the actual device there. Um, eyepiece, both of them have got adjustable eyepieces to get the focus in on the rangefinder. Again, nice little nodule down under here. Nice Precision Pro logo embossed into the battery casing, which is pretty easy to pop on and off as we go through that. And X slow, we've got nice detail, Precision Pro. And then a big thing here as well, we've got magnetic. can literally just pop it onto the side of the car and it'll stick there. I've tested it as well by just putting it onto my golf clubs and walking around the golf course and it stays there. I wouldn't, you know, leave it out of its case and put it on the club, so I would definitely have it in its case, but it does work. But, you know, for myself, I wouldn't feel comfortable from that standpoint. So, yeah, you know, on first look at them, like I say, we, we've got the makings of everything we've got in the um, in the budget one, in the premium one. Just the detail, the attention to the detail is a little bit better in the premium one. Um, again, that weight difference, it just feels a little bit light to me as well here. It feels substantial in the hand. They both feel good. This one with the, uh, the way the, the dimple sort of pattern, the hexical pattern here, Feels a little bit more grippier as I get hold of it. Feels I can get my hand really round it. Um, in terms of vision, what we can't see, you know, through the camera, I'm going to flash the displays up here now, and it's be interesting to see what it is like on course. But what will the displays look like? Is there too much going on when we get on the on course? Do we see lots of numbers, lots of things going on? That is one problem I've seen from um, range finders before that you're almost baffled by how much there is in the screen and you don't know where to look. And then the second thing when we get on course, how quickly do we get the number? Once I press that button and it's fired the laser out, is that number back instantaneous with me? Or do we have a bit of a delay? Because what I would say from budget range finders is that I've found that there's always been a little bit of a delay from those. So let's head out onto course now. We're going to test it from three yardages, see what the times are like, see what it feels like out on the golf course and what the display looks like. And then I'm going to head back here and give you my overall thoughts. So let's go three zaps with the Go 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 Sports one as we start. So we've got it set up for the slope mode which is basically by flicking the switch in here you're going to turn the slope on and off with that and then the mode is how you would change from yards to meters being over here in england always use yards you can obviously use it in meters however you go though so let's go so i've got it locked in the visual actually looks pretty decent little crosshair on it and i'm going to press now and now it's come back there so how long that took, we'll have a little timer at the second. It felt like there was a little bit of a delay there for, for how long that one took. It was 201.3 yards for that one. So I'll go again. Now. And 208 yards, uh, sorry, 200.8 yards. So a difference already there of 0.5 from the same spot. And one final one. Pressed it now. Now it's just come back and 200.7. So depending on whether that flag was fluttering, but it's pretty still down there. Only 0.5 of a yard difference between all those three. Um, yeah. 
it did feel like a little bit, especially, oops, nearly dropped it. On that first one, it felt like there was a, a little bit of a lag going through. So it'll be interesting to see when we get the premium out one, does it come back quicker that distance? Do we actually get that click? Bang, it's there. Let's take a look where were we? Same spot here. Let's go. So we've got the, let me just put the slope on here. So we've got slope on, I'm going to click there and we go, pressed it now and it's back straight away. 203 yards playing 201. Very quick how quickly that um, distance came back to me then. We'll go again, so press the button now, it's back already. Again, another 201 and saying that it was um, 203 total and again, Press the button now, and it's back with me already. So 202 that time and 201. Um, what I would say, that felt dramatically quicker. It may be literally one second difference, but from pressing, it's literally there straight away. So let's see when we move down now to 150 and those closer yardages in, is the uh, budget one going to catch up in terms of the speed that it comes back from the premium one so at the moment you know benefits are on this one right then 150 yards now we're going to go precision pro to start off with being the premium one then we've got the go go as the budget one we're 150 yards um for me like i say it's all about that speed that it's coming back at the moment is where the biggest difference is so again let's lock it in so we're on the flag press now it's back at me already, 150, 149 playing 150. Press it now, and it's back again within, you know, with even before chance I've got to say it. Again, 149 playing 150. And final one, press it now, it's back already. 149 playing 151 that time, the flag was fluttering a little bit there. So into the budget one. annoys me that little bit let's go from the same spot we've got slope on we've got distance so I've got the crosshair on and pressing it now now come back and it's gone to 148.8 so we're seeing you know pretty similar distance but it's noticeable that difference of time that it takes now now Again, 148.0, so 0.8 out there. Very good on the distance, so let's go this one. So press it now. Now it's back, 148.5. So fluctuates a little bit, but nothing that you would even notice from it. Um, that that's the big big thing for me at the moment that time that it's coming back and you can obviously as the viewer at home you probably notice it as soon as i press the uh, premium one it's there it's done pressing that one just a little bit slower but in terms of accuracy they both seem to be very much the same it's just the lag that we have at the moment we'll go down to 50 yards and we'll see what they are like as we're going through it so we're going to go budget first we'll see how quickly if the response time comes down here obviously only being 50 yards away now we saw that it was pretty similar from the 200 to 150 is it going to get quicker now that we're closer so let's turn on let's zoom focus it and we have pressed now 49.6 almost felt a little bit longer there as we got uh, closer to it let's go again so press now oh it's not done though, sorry press now now it's back 49.6 so two of the exact same yardage third and final time click now and now 49.3 so very very similar um, distances each time what I would say still lagging behind a little bit so let's just pop that one behind let's go into the premium and see what we've got here so i'm going to press it now it's back already 50 yards let's press it now it's back already 50 yards 
let's press it now it's back already 50 yards literally exactly the same from 50 yards every time and you can see how quickly i've just done that so back at home now and you know pretty good test there firstly in terms of clarity of image on the screen on the viewfinder when i was looking at it i would say the precision pro was just that little bit clearer um and also almost had like an auto focus as soon as you put it up it was bang straight in as we go through um compared to the budget one which just not quite as crisp and clear but you know pretty good overall in terms of information on the screen really good from both of them there was an extra piece of information on the budget one because it is that hunting that archery that golf um and adventure one so it almost had a degree of slope what it looked like and i found myself almost just checking each one as I went through as opposed to looking for right well there's the yardage and there's the slope I was like oh well it's that as well and just found my eye wandering a little bit so it felt like it was a little bit more condensed the information on the budget one as opposed to that feeling a little bit bigger and the numbers a little bit more accessible and easy to spot on the premium one. In terms of yardages, we saw that they were both both really, really close with the yardages that we were throwing out on each three one. I was expecting to get some real random numbers on the budget one as we went through, but you know, pretty good overall. Saw so that they were they were really tight, no real random ones there. With the Precision Pro, we found that it was pretty much spot on, uh, giving the same yardage every time as we went through, um, which I would expect from a premium one. If you are paying that a little bit more money, you wouldn't want to be seeing that there is random numbers throwing in. In terms of feels in the hand, again, you know, this just felt a little bit more sturdier to me as I was out on the course. It felt like that little bit of more weight was in there, felt good in the hand, just with that little bit of that hexagonal rubbery grip there, felt a lot more comfortable. Not to say that this was bad, it just, you know, didn't quite feel as sturdy in the hand. Again, with that sort of lightness in there, it just didn't, like I say, that, that really takes it for me. It just almost feels a little bit more robust as I actually hold it. Um, in terms of, you know, people's budgets and should you go premium, I think what we can see from looking at this is they both perform pretty well. We do see... Um, a little bit more clarity and a little bit more ease of use in terms of the display on the premium one. But you get what you pay for at the end of the day. There's a little bit more detail in the um, in the premium one with the clip, the way that the instructions come like it is an Apple um, phone. And it'd be like buying, you know, a, a Nokia 3210 or a, a pretty much a, a £10 phone versus a a thousand dollar phone or a hundred pound phone versus a ten dollar one you would you would see the differences in there there's just that little bit more care that little bit more detail goes into the premium one but everyone's got their own budget and whatever your budget can go to make sure you just do a little bit of research on them you know for me that one is fantastic we've got all the all the things with it but you get the same it just doesn't quite feel the same it'd be interesting to do the test and use them both for six months see how they work you know does one have a longer shelf life than the other but you know overall very similar but the premium one just ages it just has that little bit more detail um as we go through so you get what you pay for like i say guys I hope this uh, video has helped you out today. Do check them out and do do your research, like I say. Find out what will suit you best as you're making those purchases. I hope you've liked the video. If you have, do give that like button a smash for me. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for loads more golf information and loads more stuff to help your game. And I'll see you in another video very soon.